Patrick trying to find out what Johnny has in his hand. And he's going to check here. Cool. Hand of the day. Hey guys, it's Alex Torelli. Welcome back to an episode of The Hand of the Day, brought to you from the 37th floor lobby at the Intercontinental Bangkok. This place, super beautiful. And Johnny Chan's gonna try to make sure that record isn't broken. He's got two aces on the button. Cool. On the very first hand, he limps in, and Antonius with two kings. Can you say cold deck? Raise Patrick raises 2,700 more. He is in a world of hurt. And Johnny will just call. He's got to be doing backflips inside. So this hand comes from a heads up episode of Poker After Dark. We got Johnny Chan, the legend, against Patrick Antonius. Crazy setup hand here. Aces versus kings. Chan starts off the hand on the button. Uh, he decides to limp. 600, 1200 blinds, Chan limps in here. And I think right away, this is a play that is used sometimes in heads up poker, but it has to be balanced out with an overall reasonable strategy. So if you're only going to be limping here with super monster hands, then I don't like this play. If Chan instead is adopting a balanced limping strategy, meaning he's limping with some weak hands, planning on limp calling, and some strong hands like aces, planning on limp calling to trap or limp re-raising, then I'm okay with the limp. Chan limps over to Patrick, who has two kings. Very clear raise here. He makes it 3,900 total, 2,700 more to Chan. Now Johnny Chan has a tough decision. Of course, he's never going to fold, but he could definitely opt to limp re-raise with this hand. But at the same time, given their stack size of about 40,000, 45,000, if he does limp re-raise, say to 12, 10 or 12,000, it puts Patrick in a spot where he's forced to gamble for all of his chips. And if Chan does that, Patrick might fold out some of his weaker hands and wait for a better spot, and Chan would miss a lot of value with his aces. So in this particular situation, I do like Chan's decision to just limp call here, keeping Patrick in a pot, building a pot in position, and hopefully winning a C-bet on the flop or letting Patrick catch up with something like two overs, you know, Jack-10, King, Queen, whatever, something like two Broadway cards, letting him make a pair and potentially stack him for all his chips. So I like Chan's decision to limp call here, even though it's very unconventional. Let's go heads up to the flop. Action on Patrick. 7,800 in the pot and a pretty safe flop for both players. Patrick leads out for 6,000. And Johnny's going to make the call. Flop comes down 10 8 3 with a flush draw. Great flop for both players. Pretty hard to not get the money in here if you're either player. Patrick now bets out 6,000 in the 7,900, which I really like. As the pre-flop raiser, kings are very likely to be the best hand, but more importantly, this flop is better for Patrick's range than it is for Johnny Chan's limp calling range. So I like Patrick betting here also with kings, but with his entire range, because this flop definitely favors his holdings. Now over to Chan, who has another tough decision. If he raises here, it's sort of the same story as it is pre-flop. While this is one of the best hands he can have, definitely a viable spot to raise profitably, he's basically putting Patrick to the test for all his chips, and Patrick can really only con continue with some big draws or a top pair type of hand. So I like Chan's decision to call here because this flop will some of the time have missed Patrick's overcard hands. If Patrick has something like King-Queen, King-Jack, Ace-X, those types of hands are going to have missed and fold if Chan raises. At the same time, if Chan just calls, there's a lot of different turns that Patrick can improve on and continue barreling, potentially go all in on the turn or make a big bet committing himself to the pot. For example, let's say Patrick has something like King-Queen. 
Chan raises, Patrick's going to fold. But think about the different types of turns that are advantageous for a hand like King Queen or King Jack. Any nine gives him some equity, and any Broadway card gives him some equity or some potential cards to bluff with as well. So I think Patrick is definitely going to be bluffing on a lot of different turns with his overcard combos that missed. And for that reason, I like Chan's decision to just flat call the flop and take, to, take it to the turn. Board pairs to eight on the turn. Almost 20,000 in the pot now. Patrick trying to find out what Johnny has in his hand. And he's going to check here. Come on. I'm all in. I'm cool. Turn comes another eight, another great card for both players. Patrick now has a tough decision. Out of position, pot's 20,000, he has a stack of 32,000. So it's a really awkward stack. The pot ratio of about 1.6 to one. And if Patrick bets here, even like 12 or 13,000, it's sort of committing him to the pot. It's not a likely spot that he would bluff because it's a really awkward amount to bet. But at the same time, he has a little too much to just shove all in. And so it's really, really awkward. For that reason, I think I like checking here if I'm Patrick, allowing Chan to either bluff at this pot or value bet a worse hand and put, him, put himself in a really tough situation. Patrick has a great stack to check raise all in with. So if, if Chan decides to bet 8, 12, 15,000, something like that, Patrick can now check raise all in and basically hang Chan, who sort of is pricing himself in with a call if he bets this turn. Patrick opts to check, which I really like, and Chan now has a clear bet. A bet size here, I think you want to go about eight or 10,000. With Patrick having 32,000 behind, you don't want to bet like 15 or 20,000 because it's impossible that you're bluffing with a bet size that big because if Patrick shoves, you're going to be pricing yourself into call. So I like going a little bit smaller here. Gives Chan a better price on his bluffs and it also puts Patrick in a tougher spot, potentially making this a turn and a river decision game for Chan if he opens this up with a smaller bet size. I would go 8,000, Chan made a bet of 12,000. Now Patrick has a very clear check shove. There's plenty of hands that Chan could be betting that are worse than Kings, either as a bluff with a flush draw, straight draw, or betting for value with a hand like 10X. Patrick has a very clear shove here, which he elects to do. Chan snaps him off, of course. Trivial call with two aces and this hand is chopped up to a cooler. But I don't want you guys to just miss sort of the, some of the deeper analysis in this video and just say, oh, aces to kings, all the money goes in, because there are still a lot of decisions that could have been made that would have played this hand out differently. So I think the important takeaway from a, of a video like this is not to just look at the end all result and say, oh, aces to kings, everyone in the world is gonna lose all their money there, but to think about the different ways to play both the aces and the kings from the different players and think about which actions yield the long-term highest result, not just for this specific hand, but from all the hands that their opponents are gonna have when faced with a similar situation. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, subscribe to my channel if you like this content, I greatly appreciate it. And leave me your thoughts in a comment below, and I will see you guys next time on the hand of the day. Thanks for watching.